So we're going to go ahead and continue on now. I'm going to go ahead and load scene two so that we can work without those bars. And I'm just going to navigate out a bit so that we can see a little bit more. So what we're wanting to do with this particular video is we're going to be looking at the environmental settings and they're all contained within our Maxwell scene manager. So we're going to launch the scene manager. And if we go to this third tab here, which says environment, we're going to be greeted by a bunch of choices. The first choice that we're going to see here is sky dome. And Sky Dome is really a very primitive form of 3D lighting. It can be very useful for certain types of SSS, which is subsurface scattering materials. This is something that you're really going to need in a very specialized type of situation where, say, you're doing product renders and you need to have a certain type of plastic or a certain type of wax, or maybe you're doing certain types of skin and you're getting too much noise with a standard environment. Sky Dome would be the answer that you might want to use. With Sky Dome, we have the option of turning on the sun. And if we click over here to turn on the sun, you'll see that we now have the sun parameters. And we can also turn that off and turn it on by clicking over here on our actual shadow. So when we click that on, you can see that we also get the sun. And when we click that off, you can see the sun goes away. I don't tend to like having my shadows on because it slows down my viewport in SketchUp pretty badly. So I tend to prefer to put on my sun here if I'm going to have my sun on. Now, that said, for Sky Dome, I don't usually do sun. The second thing that you can do here with your Sky Dome is you can choose how you're going to get your color. If we use the application, it's actually going to use the color that you have set in SketchUp. Okay, well, where is that color set? Well, if we go over here to Styles and we go to Edit, and we go to background. That would be this middle tab right here. You'll see that we have the sky setting right here. Now the sky in SketchUp is always white at the ground, but we can have the color of the top of the sky here be whatever we want it to be. So we're not too concerned about the color gradient, meaning that we can't control the bottom half, but we certainly control the top half by using the sky setting right here and just allowing that to be controlled by the application here in the Maxwell Scene Manager. Alternately, what you can do is you can choose to do custom. And when you choose to do custom, now you have a lot more choices. First thing you can choose is you can choose the zenith, which is the top of the sky, or you can choose the horizon color, which is the bottom of the sky, and you can make those whatever colors you want. And then you can control the fall off ratio in the gradient, meaning that at 45 degrees, this particular sky is going to fall off from the zenith color to the horizon color. And we can change that to be higher or lower in the sky depending upon what it is that we want. This would be useful for certain types of atmospheric effects and maybe certain types of underground type scenarios where maybe you have an ambient light going on. Sky dome would be good for those types of effects. You can also change the intensity of the sky dome here. I'm going to go ahead and just set that back to application. Now, ground plane. Now, this is on all of them, and this is one of the cooler things about this particular plugin is the ability to take the ground plane, whatever that may be. So in SketchUp, that could be, again, under Styles and under Edit Background. You'll see we have a ground. We can set the ground if we want to. We can set whatever color we want for that ground to be. Or if we have a background color, we'll have a color set there as well. And what it does is the ground plane will automatically, when you set it to application, determine whatever you have for your ground plane, whether it be a ground here or whether it be the background here if you don't have ground turned on, and it will apply those. So you can also set how big is this ground plane. Right now it's 1,000 meters square. We can set the elevation. Now this can be useful for certain types of things like, for instance, glass. If you have glass objects sitting on the ground, then what will happen is you'll have the ground and the glass objects will be sitting at the exact same point and they'll create tangents that are very unpleasant looking in the render. The way you fix that is by dropping the ground elevation slightly or in increasing the elevation of the glass object slightly above the ground, just like you would have in the real world. So we also have the ability to choose a custom color and you can see how that works. We have a custom MXM, which is a Maxwell material and we can load a Maxwell material by clicking this little folder icon 
and we can set this to be whatever we want. So if we want a cobblestones or who knows, whatever. And then we can set it for disabled, meaning that we don't get anything. Now, if we are having a sky dome type of effect, that means that the sky dome color is going to be continued all the way around if we have this set to disabled. I tend to leave this for application most of the time, and that works just fine for me. You can leave it for whatever you want. We're going to be doing disabled because in this particular render, we're going to be using the none, which is the bottom here. And this is the simplest one. If we have the type set to none and we have the mode set to disabled, then we're really limiting what's going on in this world to this studio environment, which is very much like simulating a small room with very dark extremities. So that's what we're going to be doing for most of this, but I don't want to talk to you about the rest of these. The next one is physical sky, and the physical sky parameters are, again, very much tied to your lighting. So your month and your time of day is going to set where your sun is and it's going to set, are we looking at a sunset, sunrise, middle of the noon time? We don't have night times in Maxwell. We don't have night times in SketchUp. So that's something that you don't really have access to using the physical sky. But other than that, it more or less takes the SketchUp experience of using your shadow settings and makes it much, much more realistic, including things like sunsets. Now we need to have the sun on if we're going to use this. And so there's our sun power and temperature. You can change these if you want to, but I wouldn't recommend doing it because these are set to be very realistic to our natural sun. The planetary reflectance, the ozone, the water, the turbidity, the wavelength, the reflectance, and the asymmetry are all atmospheric settings. And these are going to vary greatly depending upon the atmospheric conditions and wherever you're at or wherever your model is going to be taking place in. Planetary reflectance. If we're in an environment that has lots of ground reflection, meaning lots of white on the ground, whether it be sand or snow, we're going to have a high planetary reflectance. If we're going to be in an environment like, say, the rainforest, where everything's dark, we're not going to have much light reflecting back into the atmosphere, and so we're going to have a low planetary reflectance. The ozone, okay, well, if you're in an environment where you have lots of atmospheric pollution, ozone is going to be high, versus in a place where you're having relatively clean air, you're not going to have as much ozone. Water vapor, okay, high humidity, low humidity. Turbidity, this is the amount of particles in the air, meaning dust or any type of particle that you could imagine that's in the atmosphere. The higher their turbidity, the more particles there are in the atmosphere. The wavelength, this is going to control which wavelengths of light these particles are going to be reflecting and bending. The reflectance of the particles, well, this has to do with how much of those particles is reflecting the light back at its light source, meaning the sun. This is mostly going to have to do with the bloom of the sun, and the asymmetry is going to work very much in conjunction with that reflectance, meaning that a negative asymmetry is going to allow more light to us. Positive asymmetry is going to reflect more light back at the sun. And again, if you have a low reflectance, you may not notice the asymmetry as much so. Like I said, these two work very much in conjunction with each other. Finally, we have image space, and this is where you would load an HDR image. Now, if you have an HDR image, you can do things like nighttime effects or stormy effects or things that you can't do with a physical sky. However, you won't be able to see those things in SketchUp at all. They're just not something that you could see. The other thing that I would recommend when you're working with image space is turn off the sun. You don't need that. I'm going to leave use background for all. And then you just load an HDR by clicking on this, and you can set the scale, the offset, the intensity, and you can choose the screen map if you want to for all of these. Now, that said, I don't tend to change any of these settings. The scale, the offset, the intensity is the only one that I might jack up if I've got a very weak HDR image. And sometimes that may be jacked up considerably in order to make a good exposure. But other than that, the rest of these settings pretty much stay the same. And that is our atmospheric and environmental settings. We're going to go ahead and work in, again, none. And we're going to have our ground plane disabled for this particular demo. Those are a brief introduction to the environmental settings. And if you want to know more about them, check out the manual. Check out Studio because that's where all those settings come from. And as a matter of fact, if you're working with a lot of HDR images, I highly recommend that you consider working in studio because you can see the HDRs in studio, whereas you can't see them here in SketchUp.